wants to be king! Welcome back to the War Room. In my last video, I talked about how certain things have been forced down our throats in, our, in this country, in our culture, but it was really spread throughout the globe. And the more, the more I watch society and the fabric of the world come unraveled, the more I'm convinced that what we're facing here, what we're experiencing, what we're all taking part of is a war between good and evil. And for whatever, for whatever reason, evil has, has put its agenda into overdrive. And in America, what things that used to be absolutely deplorable things that were punishable by the most absolute of punishments are now almost being celebrated. And as a culture, I, I have to believe that the majority of us don't agree with any of this. I don't, I don't believe that the majority of us think that it's okay to chemically castrate little boys or to make decisions in their lives that are gonna cause irreversible and unexpected, unexpected consequences. But what, I, what, I, what I'm really certain of is that I don't think the majority of us in this country, no matter what your color, creed, religions, religious beliefs, any of that, I don't think that the majority of us think that it's okay to cause harm to a child. What I want to talk about today is something, it's a multifaceted arena, but it's, it's an umbrella that covers a lot of things that I've spoken about in the past. And it's something that if we allow it, if we sit back and allow these atrocities to happen, allow these things to continue to progress in their insanity and absurdity, we're going to find ourselves in a world that none of us truly want to live in. As it stands now, some of the things that are being paraded and celebrated are, they're laughable. They're, they're, they're comical and sad excuses for potential and humanity. But we're not, we're not dealing with the mental disorders and the, and the true problems, the sickness that we're seeing. Instead, we're supposed to change our vernacular, change our belief system change what's fundamentally right to excuse all all sorts of things that are inexcusable in the past few years there's been an expedited push to change the system and these changes a lot of these a lot of these systemic changes that have come through the equitable hire of unqualified people simply because of the color of their skin has led to the degradation of the, of the communities that these people are in charge of. Anyone who's, that no, anyone who knows anything about the UFC knows who Cain Velasquez is. And if you know who Cain Velasquez is, you're probably very, very familiar with the latest the latest situation that he's gotten himself in and the situation itself is very complicated, but to me, it's, it's quite simple. In a nutshell, what happened is Cain Velasquez's four-year-old son reported that he had been tampered with a hundred times is what the child said. Now I will, I will play fair and, and say that a four-year-old kid probably doesn't understand the concept of a hundred, but it was more than a few times and it was enough for the child to pick that number and say that, that that's how many times that it happened. And it happened allegedly at a daycare center where the man who was a perpetrator didn't even work. The daycare is located in the building where this piece of shit lived. And so 
when this was found out, Kane called the police, the guy was arrested, and in that moment, Kane did the right thing. But from what I understand, within a few days later, this man, or this this piece of shit, I dare call this, this, this is not a man, this is not actions of a man. This piece of shit was let out with no bond, with the simple, res the simple restriction that he was to wear an ankle monitor and stay away from Velasquez's family, his son. Well, this happened, and the judge who who let him let him free was Shalina, Shalina, some some made up bullshit name, the dishonorable Shalina Brown in Santa Clara County. And she lets this, this dude go. This sick fucking piece of shit. She lets him go on, on his own recognizance, no bond, no bail. Just sets him free to do what he wishes to who, whoever else's child that he chooses to do this to. So she lets him go and Mr. Velasquez sees him in traffic and loses his shit. Tries to chase the man down so he could put them hands on him, I suppose. And then ends up running him off the road and firing shots at the car and hits the, hits the, the piece of shit's father-in-law twice. And luckily the father-in-law is okay. He's gonna make it. But Kane was has been arrested and the same judge that let this piece of shit out with no bond and an ankle monitor has denied Mr. Velasquez bond because he's a threat to the community. Now, what I would ask you as a man, if you have children, what would you do in, in a circumstance where you found out that some sick motherfucker was putting his hands on your child? I say that Mr. Velasquez is a much bigger man than I am because I wouldn't have called the police not to come get him. I would have called him to come pick him up, come pick me up. I wouldn't trust the justice system because I know, I know how this shit works. And the passion, the passion that I felt in my soul, I have a son. And if that would have happened, if, if anybody put their hands on my son, I wouldn't be here today speaking to you because I would have handled that 100% on my own. So as a man, I don't condone it. By, it is a stupid move, but I understand it 100%. But the problem that I have in this situation isn't whether or not it was wrong for what he did. He was wrong. You can't, you can't do vigilante justice. Although sometimes, most of the time, I think in this circumstance, most people wouldn't blame you for that one bit. But I think the real problem here is the culture that we're cultivating now, where we're allowing sick motherfuckers to go and do as they wish to enter women's locker rooms and, and expose themselves to tamper with little kids. There's a lot of things that I can look the other way there's a lot of things I can look past and, and put the onus on the person who's crying victim. Because oftentimes, the things that happen to those people is exactly what they ask for. It's exactly what they're, it's exactly what they want, even though they won't admit that. But no child asks for an adult to impose themselves on them. No child likes that. No child wants that. But we got judges in place, equity hires, that are letting people like this out while demonizing a father who did what almost any man, every man that I know, would have done the same thing, but he would have done that the first time. There's not a lot that we can do about a lot of things in this world, but in this case, I encourage you to look up, look up the facts in this case. And instead of getting online, tweeting about it, talking about it, just doing social media, virtue signaling bullshit, I would highly encourage anybody who understands this man's plight, understands 
what he did. Not that you condone it, but that you understand it. And that you understand how fucked up it is that they let this predator out while punishing, demonizing a father, a man who did what most men would do. That is wrong. We should not allow it. We should not encourage it. And we should get rid of the judges and, and all the people who seek to let criminals back out on the street, especially if and when they demonize and punish men that are doing the work that the law enforcement should have done the first time this dude got in trouble. I encourage anyone who hears this message who doesn't agree with the way Cain Velasquez is being treated to either send a message, but even better, make a phone call to the number that's at the end of this video and let them know that you're not okay with them punishing a father who did what you would have done. Let them know that it's not okay for them to hold this man without bond while a predator runs free. A lot of people like to talk about doing shit, talk about all the shit that's wrong, all the shit, point the finger out and point it at the world and say, oh man, look this, and very few people make a move to do anything. This is my first move to educate you, to open up your eyes, to let you see how this sickness is playing out in our culture. The next move is to make the call that I encourage you to make. It's time for us to stand up and stamp out all of this sickness, depravity, and abomination that they're trying to make our normality. This isn't a battle between me and you, us and them. This is a war between good and evil. This is a spiritual battle where all the sides are being divided up so we can all be conquered. We gotta start looking out for one another and do unto others as we wish to do unto us. Simple rule, hard to follow. Put yourself in his position. Would you want people to sit back and do nothing? Or would you hope, would you pray for somebody to at least make a call and stand up for you? You can make a difference. Good, evil, your choice, out.